Now, uh, I will do a small um, calculation of uh, an attempt to, to derive uh, this Feynman's path integral um, statement from our usual uh, way of doing uh, quantum mechanics from usual, um, so from usual Schrodinger theory. So let's discuss a more concrete understanding of, of path integral. More concrete means whatever we know how to calculate in Schrodinger theory using that. Um, so the question is that how to derive using usual Schrodinger theory. That is the question, okay? Okay, so um, to answer this question, so first uh, recall uh, from the definition of the state x comma t that uh, x hat of t acting on x comma t will be x x comma t, where x hat of t is the Heisenberg operator. So therefore, x of t is equal to e to the power i h t over h bar x hat e to the power minus i h t over h bar, where x hat is same as x hat at t equal to zero. Similarly, this gate has a time evolution, which is given by e to the power i h t over h bar acting on x, where this x is nothing but x at time t equal to zero. So it means that uh, this equation implies, now at, at, at a particular time t, um, the operator, the Heisenberg operator, uh, has eigenvalue x. Now, if you go to t equal to zero and you take the corresponding Heisenberg operator and the corresponding, that is the corresponding Heisenberg operator and the corresponding state, then that operator has the same eigenvalue x, right? Which you can easily, easily check um, e to the power i um, h t over h bar x at e to the minus i h t over h bar acting on x comma t. This is nothing but that x we defined here. So this is e to the power i h t over h bar x acting on x. But at the same time, uh, it must be the right hand side, which is x times right hand side is this x times uh, x uh, uh, t but x t um, but this x t is same as uh, this operator acting on this so therefore we must be having x hat acting on x is equal to x x, right? Anyway, um, this is how you can do the manipulations and uh, you can use the same uh, time evolution operator to calculate the matrix elements. So calculate the matrix element xftf xi comma ti to be equal to xf e to the power minus i over h bar h t 
tf minus ti acting on xi. And then again, tf minus ti can be written as uh, n times epsilon, where n is large and epsilon is uh, close to zero, going to zero. So this is uh, n going to infinity, n epsilon going to tf minus ti finite, um, xf e to the power minus i over h bar h hat in epsilon xi. And uh, this operator can be written as a factor of the time evolution operator h hat epsilon to the power minus i by h bar h at epsilon n times, right? And then you can uh, insert uh, between this um, here and here the identity, um, the identity operator, the completeness relation. So this gives you, you know, mm, limit n tends to infinity in epsilon goes to tf minus ti integral dx1 to the xn minus 1 xf e to the minus i by h bar h at epsilon xn minus 1 xn minus 1 um, um, e to the power minus i by h bar h at epsilon x n minus two and so on up to x to x one x one to the power minus i by h bar h at epsilon x n. So now one has to calculate uh, this matrix element, each one of them. Um, this can be calculated uh, in the following manner. So calculate x n plus one e to the power minus i by h bar h hat epsilon x n. Since it's uh, epsilon is infinitesimal, you can approximate. This is same as uh, one minus i by h bar epsilon h hat xn. Okay. And uh, then uh, you see mm, the first term can be calculated easily because it's just the overlap of xn plus one and xn. Uh, but the second term has h hat uh, sandwiched between xn plus one and xn. And uh, in order to do this, we will describe uh, these matrix element in a particular fashion where um, um, so let me first do write it down and then explain. So integral, so um, insert a momentum space identity operator, xn plus one, uh, pn, then pn one minus i over h bar epsilon h hat xn. Now define h a classical function h p n comma x n to be p n h hat x n divided by p n x n. Okay. Then using this, you could write um, the entire result as dpn e to the power minus i by h bar epsilon h p n comma xn xn plus one overlap pn pn overlap xn now you can use <laughs> uh, the standard expression of this overlap which is uh, one over square root two pi h bar times the phase e to the power minus i p n x n over h bar, okay? 
if you do that and use um, and use um, x dot n to be equal to um, x n plus one minus x n divided by epsilon. Okay, so um, limit epsilon goes to zero. Okay, so this is x dot n. Then using all using these two, you can get the final result to be um, integral d p n over two pi h bar. Okay, e to the power i by h bar times epsilon p n x n dot minus h p n x n. Okay, <clears throat> for small epsilon. Okay, so this is uh, for small epsilon. That is the result. And therefore, uh, when you use this, uh, uh, when you use this result for this uh, matrix element here, uh, which is given by this, um, back into uh, this expression, this expression here. Okay, then you see that uh, uh, you in this expression, you already had the integral over x. And now you have an integral over p, uh, which is coming from each uh, factor like this. Okay, so the final result, therefore, is xf tf xi ti is equal to limit n tends to infinity n epsilon tends to tf minus ti integral dx1 to dx n minus 1 dp0 by 2 pi h bar to dp n minus 1 by 2 pi h bar times exponential i epsilon over h bar times small n equal to 0 to n minus 1 p n x n dot minus h p n x n. <coughs> so this is a path integral over the phase space or it's also called Hamiltonian path integral which is sometimes called Hamiltonian path integral. Just like before, you could also write it as integral dx path integral dp e to the power i by h bar integral dt ti to tf dx dot minus h x pt. Or maybe we should take this. Uh, time dependent Hamiltonian for the time being. Let's see. Okay. So, uh, so from the using the Schrodinger theory, we therefore uh, derive uh, the same matrix element to be of this form, where we have a Hamiltonian path integral or phase space path integral. Uh, on the other hand, um, uh, Feynman uh, gives you an expression which is a configuration space path integral where there is no momentum integral. And we shall next discuss how these two, uh, this one and Feynman's proposal could be related, okay? So that's the end of today's discussion.